All right, in today's VOD session, we're going to be going over the sub-base hard point between us and Toronto uh, during Major 3, during the winner's final. So this is the first matchup between us two. Uh, so this is the first sub-base that we played against them. But, but when I was going over this on stream, I thought this was a really good opportunity to bring up a good example of what it means to actually, you know, stay ahead in hard point or stay ahead on the rotation. You know, you'll probably hear a lot from pro players, coaches, casters, just really emphasizing the importance of staying in the lead and staying ahead on rotation because... All you need to do is keep rotating, make sure you, you know, soak a little bit of time, and even if you do get broken, uh, you're on to the next hill and you're still soaking the good amount of chunk of time. And all it really takes is one full hold to really get you separated into the game. And if you can chain that with another break on their end at the end of that hill, uh, it's just, a, you know, it could be game over at that point. So this will be a full VOD session of that sub base hard point, but you'll see how important it was for us to keep staying ahead on the rotation. So let's get right into it. Honestly, go Going into this match, we were not even sure if sub base was going to be uh, picked. Like, obviously, we we would have the opportunity to possibly pick it. Well, first they picked Team A, and the last time we played them, they I'm pretty sure they picked Team B. Um, I think they wanted to get sub base in the series, obviously, because they picked it map one. But the last time we played it, uh, if if you go back to I think it was Major Two, that's when Skid Row was in the rotation, and instead of playing sub base, we had uh, what was it? Was it Karachi Skid Row? What was map one, chat? What was map one in that series? Was it Karachi Skid Row? It was probably Karachi Skid Row. But there was no sub base in that series. So this is the first time that we were meeting up. Yeah, it was Karachi. So with the Skid Row getting taken out, obviously they wanted to, to test our sub base. So that's why they picked it map one. But we were expecting it. Uh, actually, we were expecting it to be team uh, A in this situation. I thought they were going to pick team B. And we were probably going to pick it map one anyway. And we'll see a big can the boys can get it going or will it be? The sensation that is Kleenex so far so good. Crowd was electric and it actually, dude, in my opinion, in this specific series, the Toronto's like fans were, were just as loud, if not even louder. Maybe because they were like doing well and winning. But you heard, you heard a lot of Toronto fans in this series specifically. Potential MVP of the year. Scrap has been so consistent in the response. Yeah. He looks forward to these matchups. He wants gunfights. He wants to take it to the best players in the world. And this is his opportunity. So what both teams are trying to do on this map, and a map like Sub Base, a bit unique in our rotation. AG's really big here. It's unfortunately he got weird timing with number three over here because he, he gets the... You see he's, he's top like P5 right now. And number three just gets a timing to go underneath it, and he kills number four, which he thinks is the, that first guy, but unfortunately it isn't, so it's insight. So he doesn't even know that this guy got passed, but there is a, a weird timing that could have happened, and he has to account for that. But he keeps getting these kills, and now that he dies, him dying here is good for us because now we know that this guy silos and we have to clear him. So. You know, Insight could have just sneaked away and just hid behind here and waited for a break, but he knew that this kill was important because AG is constantly cutting this these guys off. Like, as soon as they spawn up and they try and take this gunfight, this is a hard-ass gunfight to take. So, him getting that kill was first to relieve pressure off of his teammates, but now we know where he is. We saw him spawn me to the new hill, number five and number eight, both looking for him silos. This is the most important kill on the map. Because he's the most push, further pushed up, or furthest push up, I mean. And he finesses around this. So this is really important because he stays alive. They are coming out of P5 here. And that's why the, the kill on AG was huge, top P5. Because now no one's picking up P5. Number 6 has to kind of pick it up. But he's not in a position to do so that well. Because, you know, he's, he's up here, but he can only get, you know, number 2 and number 4. He can't really kill number 1 and 3. So he's able to do that. So that's what Ant's able to do. And it's a really good, uh, honestly, two-piece because he's playing top snow and gets those kills. But we don't have, uh, like, the back spawns anymore, so we kind of have to hold it from this front side. Those are big kills. Those are huge kills by Inside and Scrap. Inside and Scrap just, just 2v2 this. And them staying alive as long as possible and getting these kills around the hill is important for, for them to actually get set up because their guys are coming off spawn, obviously. We'll and since we didn't clear them, they're now holding fully and we're in the deep spawn and we have to, like, move back. We just need to get these kills. Like, like we need to trade Scrap here. I don't know. It's Ken. Ken, like, gets a few shots off. He, if he kills Scrap here, we break the hill, we hold from the front, and it's, it's easy. But unfortunately, Ken isn't able to get the kill. 
and this creates a lot of chaos here because Insight helps him out with that gunfight. So that was that was a big play by Scrap and Insight. Try to make this mixy. AG's on the other side, he's blocking. So this is really important. He gets those kills, but he's blocking the, the spawn and making them spawn towards P3. So in hindsight, maybe not the best thing because we spawn him at new, but he was expecting us like one of our guys to hard block, I guess. I don't remember the comms in the situation. Yeah, I thought you were to get something. You get 10 to show for it. Not a whole lot, but now can you get it rolling, get it rocking. It's inside Kleenex through with the headshots and looking to hold it down. Kleenex started 0-5. Maybe now starting to get something going, but here comes the onslaught from Optic Texas. Three flying on Big kills. So we're obviously we're spawning them in back because we aren't blocking the spawn yet. Kills on this this hill are huge because you can hold from the front here and start blocking the spawn and making them spawn super deep, like number one and number three right here. So number five here, he's playing a situation where he's just got to cut these guys off. As long as he can like make sure that you know our P5 and our, our tunnel safe, that's that's all he can do. We still have one guy to kill back here, obviously. And that guy is like being annoying, but you know, Ant has to play around this door and make sure that he kills this guy. This is a good play by Kleenex because he's just he's making sure he stays alive. But it's it's a good good fucking play by Ant to chow this. Like you need to chow this. Unfortunately, on the other side though, this guy gets through the tunnel for free. Ken probably calls it out, but this guy in the back is is so important that we have to focus on this guy before we can focus on someone in their back so that's just unfortunately the timing that happens because uh brandon dies here how does he die so he gets a kill and oh so he gets he tries to go to the op4 and him dying here that's that's the crucial part of this break because him dying here now now middle is open they can break on through for free this guy just has to wait and buy his time so that's actually a massive kill on that break. Killing Brandon. So 20 seconds left. We kind of have to just give this up. Maybe maybe Brandon like gets a kill off all, but we're spawning safe now, and we just have to we just have to rotate. Just make sure we're covering everything for the new rotation. So Ken hits top E5, this is good. Making sure that they can't get out of P5. And everything on that side of the map, like this this right side of the map is covered. So we know they're all spawning deep. We're on the hill. They can't go P5 because obviously these guys are watching it. So we have to make sure that we're holding our long and we're holding our mid alley. And this guy just walks out the mid alley. That's number two. So we just don't get information on this on this hold. And now we start spawning out because they're they're starting to, to break. Number four Kleenex is on top of the top three or top E3. Or not top E3, but top third. And number two is blocking this as well. So this is this is a situation where it's like we gotta get info on, on these guys breaking. Like they shouldn't be able to run through middle or sorry, what was it? What is this route? It goes run through middle to dark here. You shouldn't be able to do that for free on this on this type of hold. As Optic enjoy the setup, he'll be lurking on one side of the map. The movement there, the play there. Three like, look at number two. He just runs up straight through. One more bullet, he got that. But look where you're taking these gunfights, yeah, yeah. right? It's nowhere near the Like, we got those initial kills on the right side, which is good, but oh, we have to account for the other other areas that they can break from. Couple of players spawning out in front of Dashy. Ultra have to go. They at least keep it white for now. It turns out when you have multiple gunfights happening at full, 20 seconds into the next hard point, probably good for the team. So honestly, first first three, first three hills, it wasn't even great. Like we re-break back on here. But we had chances to hold like all three of the hills. They just won the more important gunfights and got through our setup in that last one at least. Now we go into a P5. We've been actually pretty solid on the P5. Like ever since the game dropped. So we're, we're pushed out silos here. Jesus. We're pushed out silos here. We get this kill. We know that they could, they could be spawning deeper over here. 
pulled. So there's putting pressure on Ultra with their slaying ability. Control we know that there were splits because there are still people alive from that old hill. And now we can play for people coming out of low P5 here. We clear these two kills and that's massive because now we only have to worry about this side of the map. We don't have to worry about our back anymore. But a team shot is in out of shots in Dashi. I thought Dashi. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> he got to, shot in the back. I was about to lose my mind though. I saw who came through on the kill feed. But more time McCrew and Parak it up right now for Optic Texas. Balanced effort out of the squad. To Kenny's POV, we will go. Damage. So I said we were good on the P5s, and that's just an instant break right there. They get every kill on the, on this break without us a, a trading even a kill. Unfortunately, Brandon dies there. And since Brandon dies there, now Ann has to worry about here and here. He has to worry about his top and bottom. This isn't the best position right now. Um, like we kind of talked about this right after, but him, because he wants to trade out Brandon, he has to look at so many different angles for this specific gunfight. And they're coming from both angles, so it's, it's hard for him. And now all you have is, is one guy left on hill, one guy out, and when you have 4v2 and you know one guy is in this corner here, it's very easy for the enemy team. So Brandon probably has to stay alive there, and obviously Ant could have played maybe a, a better position to hold one of the angles. So you get a healthy chunk of time, and again, just enough to like stay in the fight right after your ultra. It's been a slow start for a couple of your players. Kleenex has picked it up. Envoy still sitting at double negative, but but we're still in the lead. That's that's the that's the thing with staying ahead on the rotation, is you kind of control the pace of the game because all you need to do is have one big full hold, and it's all worth it, you know. But instead, like we're getting these chunks of like. 20 seconds at the start and then maybe we make it a little mixy so they're not getting a lot of good time but we're still holding that first initial part of it even though we might get broken and then we chain it with a next rotation win well, he was running a rival there for a bit too. so that's why we're still in the lead even though these have been broken you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying again another rotation win it was Scrap who got them out of a tough spot at that P5. They're going to need a play here, maybe from number one on the minimap, to set them up on this P5. This is a big kill on Ken. Scrap turning and getting this kill is, is massive because, like like we've been saying all the time, when you have someone in your, in your spawn, in your base, like, they are so important to kill because you don't want to have to worry about both your front and your back. You know, because this guy be, could be anywhere if he gets an escapes towards P2 going to need a play here maybe from number 1 on the mini map cuz he was he was that disruptor you know Dashi just put his shots in and there we go there is scrapping on boy onto the hill yeah i mean you're kind of all over so because of that like because of that kill and because of this number 2 spawn this number 2 hits out towards the hill they start soaking now and we kind of have to rebreak onto this it was a split spawn that obviously we needed to account for because ken was out but Ken needed to stay alive. Unfortunately, he didn't. It's just hard for him because he's in the base and they pick it up. So it's like nothing really you can do. But look at this. Now number six is trying to do the same thing. And trying to get in their base. Trying to disrupt. Create some type of opening. But they're getting kills on the front side. That's the thing. If you have someone disrupt, like, it's good. But what if they just all focus and, and start getting kills on the other side? And now you're just like left in nowhere to do nothing. Looking to make the play. We'll see but he can still make this opening. This. Like it's just unfortunate that two people die for it. Huge kill. Because now, now they have to look for him. They have to worry about him. We haven't seen Shotzi for a while. This is a map and they trade him instantly. So, so good plays by Toronto. This is still good for Toronto. I do not like this situation for us. They're able to like cancel all, all our disruption towards the P1. They know we're all spawning over around here. They have P1. Now they can focus their attention towards like P5 side to, to make sure we can't get a good rotation to P2. You can see this is going to set up Ultra for this P2. Scrap, lining him up once again. Like during this moment, I, this moment, I was like, oh, we were up 50. Like if we had a better P1 there or had a better P5 into the P1, this game would be like pretty much chalk like it is in the, I think it was the Miami match. Or maybe it was this the second Toronto? 
But now this is a, a sketchy situation because now you you're going into a P2 with not without the rotation. Now you have to break the P2, and they know where you're spawning, and they just have to basically cover P5, and that's it. They have one guy that can play this area in case someone takes a route this way. But everyone else just needs to basically pay attention to their their mid tunnel and P5. See, that's that's what Scrap picks up. This is, this is a good play by Scrap. Obviously, Kenny's trying to take the route. Maybe try and disrupt this side. Maybe block the spawn. Break in from this side. But Scrap cancels that out. Cancels that route. And now we're all stuck going P5. They don't initially trade Ant, which is big for us because it's possible he can disrupt here. Ken gets a kill off spawn. They actually pick up. They actually pick up. Pick up Ant. So this is good by Envoy picking that up. And they're just holding this. Like this is nothing really we can do about it. We're just trying to get kills, jumping in from the side door from the AC. They just gotta hold it tight. Big kill by uh, big kill by Ant over here. Ant kills this guy dark, and that draws attention away, and that helps out the rest of his team. Because now they can get this this kill, and then they can focus inside last guy live. Now we're holding last 15 seconds. You know, it's it may not seem as much, but that's 15 seconds that they could have had, and we have new rotation. So even though they're not soaking this, it's still good white time for us because. They're not soaking. But otherwise, like if they if we didn't win those gunfights, they would have been soaking that time. Good job by Ken. He's taking the route to, to pick up this right side, but he doesn't know that Envoy's taking a water route. So this is this is big because usually teams will just send like a person long or something. He's on the crate heady, you can kill them. When they go in the water route, it's a little bit more difficult. Kills off new is really good because now you know for sure where they're going in order to break this hill because they're obviously not pushing through old so they have to either be going through like the mid alley or or through long like through server this is a dirty route by envoy he kills him off the crate heady and that crate heady is, is disgusting if he's on it so now because it's white time and because they're blocking the spawn Ken spawns out, which is massive for their break attempt because they just had all they needed to do was get one kill, and that was the kill on Ken. And now they're already blocking the spawn, and we don't spawn close. We're we're spawning out, and the whole hold is completely, completely uh, fucked. Envoy wins that with a sub. This is a sub by way. AG has an AR. That's insane. So once again, we're not soaking time. So now we have to just make sure that we keep them off it as much as possible. Number seven, we'll look for spawn kills. We're going to try and break onto the hill because this entire hold just got completely fucked. And then they soak the rest of this time. Oh, actually, we spawn in the back here. I'm surprised we spawn in the back. I'm guessing number two is blocking, is blocking the the spawns, or maybe it has to do with how he killed our guy in the spawn, and now he's blocking like both sides. That's interesting. So once number four spawns out, he knows that we spawn in the back here. But this is good for them. I don't know how AG gets this spawn. I'm very surprised we don't spawn in the back. I'm assuming it's because one of our guys died over here, so that doesn't want to spawn us in the back. But AG gets this spawn. I think we're kind of lucky for this spawn. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I I'm not sure exactly what happened here. I'm I'm the, the thing that I'm assuming is that because they got this kill on Brandon, it's it doesn't feel safe for the game to spawn us here because we just died here. Even though this guy is already dead too. So I'm not sure. Like maybe because of the way that both of these guys died. And it's because of interactions happened. They just don't want to spawn us 
um, close to that. So it spawns AG out, and he's he's very confused here. I remember him saying, like, what the fuck? I just spawned the fuck out. Number one spawns here, so he's going to look to his right. We don't know that this guy spawned here. There's no way for us to know that this guy spawned to our left. And because he gets that kill, he actually spawns our guy closer to the hill than he is. So now we're holding the hill because AG spawned out there. I'm not going to lie. That was a little bit lucky on our part. Does it, do we spawn in the back here again? Oh, we do. AG, sp AG gets two bless spawns. I won't lie. Is he gonna expect this though? Spawning right in behind him. No way you're reading that. Wow. The shots coming. I'm disgusted. He's going to drop. That is that's, a painful one. I'll be one to say that's just some blessed spawns. I don't even know, dude. Like. I guess it. I, I, I guess it's because we're on hill. I think the hill control matters a lot for this. So since we're holding hill, it's gonna prioritize this spawn for us. Um, it's unfortunate. I don't think it should work that way, but that's that's just the way it goes. Like it is like. Don't get me wrong, it's a bullshit spawn, but I think it's it's just because of our hill control. Like, if, if, if six is not on the hill here, if Ant's over here, white time, I don't think we get the spawn, but shit, dude, this is... AG gets the first blessed spawn on the P3, and then this spawn over here on the P4. It kind of blesses us, I'm not, I won't lie. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll be straight up, it's, it is some good spawns for us. And then since they're all spawning out, like usually, usually after the first wave of stuff, like first wave of kills on the P4, it's a pretty easy hold from that at that point. Like as long as you're playing super tight, like one guy on the hill, maybe one guy in the green tarp watching his long or something, and you have someone like either P2 or mid map kind of cutting people off, it's it's pretty easy to hold the rest of that time. And then you move your way towards the P5. This is a big route here by Ken. Ken taking a deep route, making sure that he's going to try and focus on anyone that might be already towards this P2 plat slash silos area. Oh, what happens here? Oh, just cut. Did he get the kill? Let's see if number two dies. Oh, he does die. That's a huge kill by Ken. And he got cut off by the stream. So he gets his kill because, uh, you know, number two spawns out and he gets a death on the scoreboard. So I know that he lost this gunfight. But Ken winning this gunfight here creates progression on the map for this P5 for us. But if all the skirmishes started to go down low as that lead change is in, can he be to be the first man? He gets another kill. So he's like he's screaming for people to come in and help him like towards P2, because he already got two huge kills towards the silos area. Starting to progress up the map for P for P2. Or sorry, P5. Unfortunately, he loses that gunfight, and I think we, we just need to prioritize someone to be with him. Unfortunately, I think AG loses a gunfight in P2, but he's trying to clear P2, so that's understandable. Maybe we just should have sent someone to help him out. It's like, Ant has to get time, and, and the thing is, like, Brandon's over here because he got bumped off from the, from the P4. But we need to like get to Ken over here. It's just no one's really in the position to. I guess you could say maybe AG should have gone to him instead of going through P2 alone. But I don't know. That's kind of nitpicky. Now we have to re-clear both. So because they're pushed out silos, look at these parallel spawns. Number two and number five get parallel spawns here. Ken wins a huge gunfight. Now, number three and number four have to worry about both sides. They have to worry about P2, and they have to worry about P5 in case this guy hits this out. And obviously, they have to worry about their mid, because number six is hitting this out. Their turn to try and hold. Huge kill by Ant. And he gets a second here. Yeah, two-piece. And that's that's the break to win the game, honestly. like Five should get this number number one kill on the top cat. And now it's just a free hold. Like We know that they're going to be spawning P um p5 actually we i think we think that there's still someone possibly towards this p2 area but it is a four down so we're looking just for in case there was type of, some type of split spawn but now we should know 
um, that they're all P5. Big kill by Ken. He picks up that, you know, once again, the person taking the route towards this way to try and break on in through this P2 side. We get kills top snow. Now, if AG's top, you know, P5, we have someone on hill, we have someone silos, this, this setup is kind of like indestructible. There were some blessed bombs though, I won't lie. Excuse me. So Toronto figures they just chalk up the rest of that time because they just want to hit out the P1. Because they know they can't break that P5, it's just too, it's too hard to do it. So they cut their losses, set up for the P1. But now we start getting kills here. This is important. This is very important. So they have to worry about Brandon here. So first they have to worry about Brandon P2. But also number one, Scrap, he gets the top server, but he doesn't see number six go underneath him. So he's in this gunfight with number seven. But number seven just has to bait because Ant's just going to kill him from behind. So Ant secured a timing where he could kill uh, Scrap for free. And then we, we just converge on point. They only have one guy on point because they had one guy, uh, or sorry, they had two guys look for Brandon. They had two guys look for Brandon. Actually, one of them sees uh, Ken mid-map. Ken gets that kill. Huge kill by Ken because now he can converge from the mid-side. Number three was looking for Brandon. And now they're all spawning deep because we secured these spawns. Huge kill by Brandon. Last guy in line for them that could have like somewhat disrupted this side. So now we know they're all spawning forward. Making sure that everything's covered. We should look P5. Brandon, Brandon does. He's big over here to stay alive. How do we die on hill? Oh, we got naded. That's what it was. We got naded. Ken tries to Ken tries to get towards it, and he gets cut off by this guy mid uh, mid map. So drawing our, their attention away from the middle of the map was huge. Because Brandon had to focus on this guy P5 for so long, and because that gunfight took so long, this guy up middle map was able to kill Ken. We still have Brandon's cruise, so we can use that. AG gets a huge kill on time, so now you know Brandon can use it somewhere else. He can't kill Kalenix because he's inside, he can't kill Scrap because he's inside, so he just bangs it off a wall. Huge kill by, by Ken here. Gets a kill on, on Kleenex. Number one gets traded out. Now we're up 60 points. And we just, again, like we said on the P P1 rotation, or sorry, the P2 rotation last time, you're soaking the end of this P1, making sure that you have this P5 area so they can't get to P2 as well. So they just bully it out. There's just, too, there's just too many bodies. We die over here. We're going to have one more wave to kind of defend this P2. We know they're already in it. So this is, this is big kills by them. If they can get it. Yeah, it's gonna come down to a red ultra. No, they need a clean P2. They're gonna have to rotate over to, towards P3. Close spawns in the back for Optic. Ken didn't win the first one. Shotzi waiting for his teammates. The nades. Now break attempt. Wait for each other. Unfortunately, the team nade is met. Amp runs at this guy. But the Kenny teammate comes in. As long as Kenny could stay alive for as long as possible, buy some time for these guys spawning up close to reinforce, that's all he needs to do. So making sure, you know, not only does he not die, maybe he can get a kill, it's instantly win for us because we're at 245. He does get one kill, which is great. AG takes a good route. AG takes the top third route, flanks Cat, gets two piece, and wins this game. So I'm not gonna lie, we did get blessed with a few spawns there. Uh, but we played the like the end of that map really well. well 